I don't have a good feeling about this. Hey! What's up, my people? Zemgo here, the freak and geek himself, and today we will be reviewing the Dream Star Toys Silver Bolt. So here we are, and there he is. And first and foremost, as always, we'll take a quick look, move you out of the way, at the packaging. It's a pretty big box here, so right up front here, we got Silver Bolt. His name is Silver Bolt. They just went with it. They 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 didn't they did not care in more ways than one when it came to this figure. But anyway, here's a nice image of silver bolts on this side. Nothing on this side. We have silver bolts on top. We have an image of the jet mode. I still don't know what this close up is supposed to mean. Look, surfaces. I have no idea. On the bottom, we have some more product shots here. Things, stuff. Some more close ups on the back of the box. We have some more obligatory product shots. This, that, the other things, stuff, stuff, and the things. You got a QR code there. You can scan it if you want to. QR code there, scan that if you want to. Things of stuff, ABS, PVC, POM, all that good stuff. That's basically it for uh, the packaging. Then moving right along, here we have Silver Bolt, and this is the final component of Dream Star Toys Superion. And um, yeah, this figure, oh, 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 oh man, this figure has been quite the ordeal. This figure was pain, this figure was suffering, this figure will be my supervillain origin story. Yeah. So a little backstory here. This is actually my second copy of Silverbolt. My first copy, um, I was going to review about two weeks ago, and when I went to move his arm, his left arm just snapped right off, which sucked. Couldn't repair it. It was just completely shattered. So I ordered a replacement. The replacement got here a couple days ago, and the right arm was broken off in the box. If you follow me on Twitter, you've you've seen my uh, my journey with this. Um, but yeah, after some extensive surgery, I transplanted parts from my first copy onto this copy, and now I finally have a figure that is in one piece. Hopefully, it will stay this way until we finish this up. But yeah, this figure has been a lot of not fun, and it's still a lot of not fun. So we're going to get through it, though. We're going to get through it. I did not save the best for last. I just saved the uh, pain and suffering. I, I just put it off as long as I possibly could. But we got to get this done, so we're going to get this done. But here is Silverbolt. He looks amazing. It's the one compliment I can give this figure is it looks awesome. Love the design of these aerial bots. But let's get in closer so we can take a look. Not at that silver crotch. Nope, at the silver noggin. There's the noggin. Uh, you can see right there, a very nicely done head sculpt. Looks real good. I personally dig it. Very nicely done. Of course, the eyes look dead when the eyes aren't uh, lit up, but still, a nicely done head sculpt. It says caution on his chest. That's very, uh, very appropriate, honestly. Very appropriate. Caution. Caution indeed. Um, <laughs> but... We get some nice bits of gold in here, some gunmetal grays, some of that nice silver. We get some red tampograph detailings all throughout. Again, lots of nice detailing here. Some nice little tampographed paint apps there. Uh, these little thigh pieces here are die cast. He is quite hefty, um, I will say. I don't know how much die cast is in this figure. I think there's die cast in the, in the heels, but... Moving on to legs again, lots of nice details, some good paintwork where there is paintwork. Little toesies. And off the side here, again, lots of details, some nice metallic red there. This one by being the combined mode chest, but well, looks quite nice. We got a lot of backpack here, just a, uh, just a smorgasbord of folded up panels here. For the backpack, the landing gears, we got some cannons here on the back as well. So, no, it's quite a nice looking silver bolt. Now, articulation wise, what have we got? I'm gonna tell you. So, the head can rotate, can do a full 360. He can look up, he can look down. Uh, the arms can rotate on a nice ratchet. Truth be told, I am scared to move his arms anymore. Like, I just, this, this joint seems fine, but, um, there is outward movement. Um, of course, the shoulder pad can move up and down. Um, he can move his arms outward. I am terrified to move his arms outward because that's how the first one just snapped. I was just moving his arm out and it just snapped right off. So it's it moves. I'm just terrified to move it. But yeah, it's on kind of like a... 
it feels like a dummy ratchet joint. Um, the uh, you do have bicep rotation. You have a double jointed elbow. As far as the uh, wrists go, uh, the wrist can rotate. They also have a hinge that allows the hands to move outward if you need. Um, as far as the fingers, we do have articulated fingers. The thumb is on a ball joint at the base, hinge there and hinge there. Each finger is on a ball joint at the base, as well as a hinge there and a hinge there. So we have some nice posable fingies. Um, he does have waist rotation. Some nice clickety clackety waist rotation. Uh, you can move these panels out of the way. The legs can move forward about that far, not very far back, about that far before the backpack gets in the way outward. I don't want to move his arms. Wait, I'm moving this way. That I'm not too scared about. Outwards, you can do the full splits, probably and then some, but again, I don't want to move things around too much. I'm so scared of this figure now. Uh, you have high rotation. <laughs> you do have uh, 90 degrees of bend there at the knee. You can kind of see how things move around there as you're engaging those joints, although some things do get kind of stuck. Again, things kind of, so, some things just kind of work on this figure. Um, as far as the feet go, the feet, uh, they can move up, they can move down, you have tiltage, and that is pretty much it. Now, as far as accessories go, we get a uh, big old blaster here. Done a dark gray with some silver, some little bit of gold there. Nice big old blaster. Uh, this will also factor into the combine mode as well. We get this big chunk, which is the nose cone for the jet mode, but it doubles as just a big cannon here. And here it is in its cannon configuration. That's pretty cool. I like that. Of course, we get a uh, little wedge prying tool. Comes in handy. Kind of not so much for this figure, but still, like that they included it. Of course, we get the display stand, same display stand that comes with all of these figures, a little light in here. I don't have batteries in any of this stuff, but you know, you can watch the past videos and see how to install the batteries and what batteries it takes. Um, but yeah, with the adjustable arm and all of that good stuff. We get the adapters for the stand, this one for robot mode and this one for the jet mode. Uh, we also get this central light, and this is for the uh, the bases when you have them all connected. This will sit right in the middle. This takes a kind of battery that I do not have and did not feel like tracking down for something that I was only going to use once. But yeah, the little central light looks real nice, though. And you get an alternate mouth plate face for the combined mode. And you also get uh, these two vehicles right here. They're like transport vehicles. I'm not exactly sure what to call these. Um, but uh, these will become the combined mode feet. And you can see, they're pretty nicely done. You got the Dream Star Toys logo right there on the front. Trans clear and windshields and windows. Even some windshield wipers going on there. Little rims done in silver. You can see how these are gonna connect to the, uh, to the legs. There's the top, there's the bottom, you have a little rubber pad here, so he won't slide around when he's in combined mode, which is quite nice. It does roll pretty well, as rolling things should. And what you can do here is you can uh, open up this little gray panel here, and it's quite tight, you might need the uh, little wedge tool to get that up. And then you take the landing gear and you just drop it into that opening, and now he can tow the jet, a thing you can do if you want to do it. It doesn't work perfectly for all of them because some of them have uh, wider landing gears, but for the ones that it does work for, you know, it, 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 it does a job. It tows if you want to tow. Now, as far as the transformation for these, I will show that off in the finale video, but for right now, we're just going to leave them as is. And as far as the display stand goes, you can use this adapter right here. You take this and you just shove it right up his butt, just right there. And there you have your base of displayage. Hooray for bases of displayage. And of course he has the light up feature in the eyes. I don't have batteries in him right now because I am so fed up with this figure that I just don't care anymore. But. <laughs> Takes the same batteries as all the other ones. You take the gun, you boop them on the snoot, and the eyes will light up. Again, things you can do if you want to do it. And as far as the weapons go, this gun here, you can hold pretty, 
securely, although his hand doesn't stay all that secure, but the gun actually stays in his hand pretty securely. The big old cannon, you can just plug right in there, and there you go. He can pew pew blast blast, pew pew blast blast, and all of that good stuff. So there you have that, and now for comparison. Here he is with G1 Silverbolt, because he is precious. Oh, so precious. Here he is with MPM Prime, because again, I feel like these work as movie bots. Just my opinion anyway, but I think it works, but you can see how that works out. You can see he's a pretty, he's a pretty big boy there. And there we have the team all together at last. And yeah, they look great. I think they look great. Great designs here. Silverbolt looks fantastic too. Unfortunately, that's the only compliment I can give him. But all in all, though, the team looks great together. So, and there you go. So that is basically it for the robot mode. So here's the deal. Um, I'm not going to show the transformation in this video. Um, if you want to see the transformation, if you need help with the transformation, the Just Transform It video is always the very first link in the description down below. So if you need to see the transformation, you can go there and watch that video. But I'm not going to transform this thing more than I have to, so I'm going to save myself the pain and suffering, save you the pain and suffering of watching it, and we'll just skip right to the jet mode, so let's do that right now. So after a lot of struggle, here we have Silverbolt in his jet mode. Whatever. So there he is. <laughs> in his jet mode. And um, yeah, the jet mode, it, it looks good, but man, it is not fun getting him into this mode. Not, not fun. The engineering on this is just, it, it's not good. It's just not good. And I know somebody in the comments is going to say, oh, the transformation is not that bad. It is, though. It, it really is, though, because the biggest problem with this transformation, number one, it fights you, like, a lot. And also... A lot of the transformation doesn't get secured and locked down until pretty much the end. So up until then, you just have these big chunks just kind of flopping around on armatures. And it just, it's its not fun. It's not intuitive. It just was not well thought out. They just made it work. They didn't make it work in the most efficient way, but they made it work. But here he is in his jet mode. Again, it's a nice looking jet mode. I will give it that. It looks real nice. Looks real nice. Let's get in close here so we can take a look at uh, some little details. You can see we have kind of a, uh, sorry about the glare here, but we have you know, kind of a semi-tinted cockpit there for the windshield. Nice silver there for the tip of the nose cone. And we got some nice tampographed details going throughout. I'm sorry for the glare from the lights. <laughs> but again, it's a lot of silver, so it reflects, but um, still... Some nice stuff going on here. Again, we have the uh, the caution. It's actually spelled backwards on this side. It says it right here. There we go. Caution. Caution, again, very appropriate term for this figure. Again, you got the little tampograv details throughout. You got the thrusters here on the back, which actually has some, like, blue. I think it's blue transparent plastic on the back. Oh, that looks nice. Real nice. And the underside, I mean, it's, it, and the funniest thing about this transformation also is that you do all this work and it's still pretty much robot under a jet. I mean, it's not, it's all just there. I mean, it's folded up as compacted as, as it can be, but I mean, it's all just a lot of just junk hanging off the bottom <laughs> of the jet mode here. You do have the rolling wheels for the landing gears. So it can roll as rolling things should. Hooray for rolling flying things. And here we have all of the aerial bots together in their jet modes and G1 Silverbolt because precious. But yeah, they do look quite good together. Quite, quite good together. I mean, a lot of silver, but uh, they do look quite, quite awesome together. And here's what it looks like when you have all the display bases put together. And that's, that's pretty cool. And you can totally have your jets on the display stand flying off into battle. And that's a cool option. Hey, why not? Dare I say why not? It does make for a very cool display. And hey, it's a thing you can do if you want to do it. So, and there you go. So that is pretty much it for the jet mode. And a pretty good looking jet mode. Just not a whole lot of fun to get him into this mode. But, you know, 
It looks pretty good nonetheless. But now let's get down to transformation again into combined mode. So we're going to do that real quick, shall we? So after that ordeal, uh, here we have Silverbolt in combined mode. And uh, again, really good looking combined mode. Not a whole lot of fun to get him into this combined mode though. But, you know, the end result does look quite quite good and uh, let's just get it close here so we can take a look at the head sculpt there it's a very good looking superion head sculpt there you got the transclear red there for the visor looks quite good one thing to note is i can never get these two halves of the chest to line up they're they're basically one half tabs over the other half and it's just i i tried to shave away plastic to get it to fit better and this is still the best it's the best I can get it to line up. I may have to try to do some more little fine-tuning with uh, shaving some plastic away. But, yeah, it's the best I can get it at the moment. But still, love the metallic red there on the chest. Those nice tampographed details there. Again, looks really good. No fun to get them in this mode, but looks real good. Some nice chunky thighs there. Move up the back. He does have a proper booty, but we'll show that off <laughs> in the finale video. And again, you just have the whole mess of folded up panels there. On the back, though, little cannons and whatnot. Um, but overall, it is a good-looking combined mode. None the less. So, hey, I can work with it. I can work with it. So, yeah, that is pretty much it there. So, there you go. So there you have Silverbolt 10. Man, this figure! Oh my god. So first thing is just the horrible QC. I had an arm break off on both copies that I got. And I'm not the only one. I heard a lot of people talking about the arms breaking off and even the legs breaking off. So yeah, that's, that's no good. That's no good at all. So that right there is a major case of your mileage may vary, a very bad case of your mileage may vary. And then the figure itself is just, it's just not fun. It's not fun at all. The transformation is just a chore to say the least. It's, it just doesn't work smoothly. There's not much that doesn't fight you. And it's just a major pain to get him from mode to mode, literally and figuratively. Like my fingers hurt after transforming this figure. Now, granted, he looks great in all of his modes. The robot mode looks really cool. Again, I love the design of these aerial bots. Um, the uh, the combined mode looks awesome. The jet mode, jet mode's fine. I mean, he's still a lot of robot under a jet, but the jet mode still looks pretty good. But yeah, this figure, I can definitely say, is the worst figure of this set. By far the worst figure of this set. But that is just my two cents, as always, to each their own. Everyone is entitled to their opinion. Me, personally, the biggest compliment I can give this figure is that it looks good, and it pretty much ends there. So, there you go. Now, I got this figure from BombusB.net. I'll put a link to their site in the description down below, so you can check that out. You can also check out the Superion playlist for any reviews you may have missed. Also linked in the description down below, so you can check that out as well. And I think that's it. So don't forget to check out Endgames, check out Love, Peace, Paranormal, follow me on Twitter, all of that good stuff down in the description below. And I think that's pretty much all there is to say. So there is the Dream Star Toys Silver Bolt. And Zemgo saying, remember, you don't stop playing because you grow old. You grow old because you stop playing. Be geek. Be proud. Palm in your face. No, oh, Silverbolt! Thank Primus you're here! Don't worry, Prime. We'll win this battle. Absolutely nothing can go wrong now. Hmm. You know what? I like him. He's a bot you can trust. Everything went wrong. No! How are you even saying that?